Hello, everybody, and welcome to Quantum Leap Revisited, our weekly show where we go over some classic Quantum Leap and uh, discuss uh, what we like about it, or I would say what we like or don't like about it, but usually we like it, so it's a rather positive affair. But uh, we analyze and we discuss and we still uh, have good conversations. And as usual, I have this wonderful panel of guests with me, which uh, you guys are already familiar with. Uh, to my right, I have uh, Ro from the Scarif podcast, also known as Ro from the Scarif Scuttlebutt podcast, uh, also known as Ro, uh, the co-founder of the Red 5 Network, a network of other podcasters uh, who views Ro as their leader. Uh, Ro is also a veteran in the field of broadcast news, which he's been working on uh, in for many years, and he also has expertise when it comes to technical uh, camera angles, uh, d different technical stuff that happens on a production, which always great to hear his input. How's it going, Ro? How's it going, Price? Good to oh, be here. Oh, and his podcast, you can hear it on Spotify and Amazon and Apple, and wherever there's podcasts, you can hear them. How's it going? It's going great. Good to be here. Good to have you here. Next, we have uh, the script doctor. The script doctor is uh, an experienced screenwriter. He has his own Patreon where he uh, teaches people uh, the art of writing, of screenwriting. He also has his own channel, the script doctor, where he uh, uh, has videos that are either interviews or uh, interviews related or uh, videos related to screenwriting. Uh, best of all, he has his show scripts on Saturdays which is at 7 p.m. Eastern every Saturday. And uh, on that show, he takes scripts that were c considered by big Hollywood studios that didn't end up getting made into movies, and he analyzes them along with guests. I've been a guest a few times. It's a terrific show. I highly recommend it. How's it going, Script? It's going well. I'm happy to be here this evening to talk some Quantum Leap with you all. Uh, I am happy as well, and it's always good to have you here. Next, we have Nicholas the Backyard Tardis. Uh, Nick, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, I thought I heard some like weird noises, like there were weird he's running, he's coyotes running around, in the bushes. Yeah, he's running, running around with his goats. <laughs> oh no! It was the the cat was on my computer. I was kicking it out of the room. Ah, <laughs> uh, that that happens sometimes. Uh, in any case, uh, for those are, that are not familiar, Nicholas, uh, also known as the Backyard Tardis, uh, he is the local minister in his town. He's also the local locksmith. He also works with his sheriff and with his fire department on special operations. And in addition to that, he has his own ranch where he raises a, a bunch of goats. Uh, and he's also an expert in science fiction. So uh, always great to have him here. He has two YouTube channels, one, The Backyard Tardis, and the other one called Adventures in Locksmithing. Uh, Backyard Tardis, more kind of science fiction, pop culture stuff, whereas uh, the Adventures in Locksmithing, more uh, him on the job uh, doing cool things. Highly recommend both channels. Really good, good, interesting content. How's it going, Nick? Going good. Uh, ready to uh, talk some Quantum Leap. Awesome. And then finally, we have the real Sean Crum Crummel. The real Sean Crummel. And uh, Sean has his own uh, sticker collection on Etsy. Uh, I believe it's, I always get this wrong, it's real Sean Crummel art at Etsy.com. Etsy finally, I did it. Uh, I also leave the link in the descriptions. Hopefully they don't get removed, but I usually put links to his store in the descriptions. And uh, Sean also has a YouTube channel where he does uh, drawings. Uh, he draws his own art, and that's always cool to, to, to watch him do that. In addition, he also has uh, live streams for pop culture here and there and retro comic book reviews. So uh, you should definitely check that out as well. And now that we've gone over the, the whole panel here, it's nice to see our, uh, a lot of the regular people we see here in the chat, whether it's Tex Rogers, Ron Donaferro. Um, I think I saw some, maybe I saw Lisa Katrian. Well, am I wrong? Thought no. I saw her. Yeah, she's there. Katrian? Trippin' Orc is here. Trippin' Orc, always good to see Trippin' Orc. And yeah, the, a lot of, of great people to see here. And uh, without further ado, let's just jump into this episode. This episode is called Catch a Falling Star. It's season two, episode 10. Uh, it is an episode that uh, Donald uh, Belisario himself, the creator of the series, he directed this one. Uh, so it is uh, an interesting episode that he kind of stepped in and he directed. And uh, 
in a way, I don't, I won't, I won't say that it's different than uh, than episode. Every episode is different of the show, but it has its own kind of thing, and uh, we're gonna go over it. Let me just find this file that I'm looking for, and hopefully, I can share this. If not that would be awkward. And let's see right now if is it. I, I think it looks okay. Can I, maybe I can enlarge more? There you go. Bigger is better. <clears throat> uh, as uh, as Roe often says. <laughs> just do I? Do I really? No, I don't think you ever said it. <laughs> I just pinned it on you for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> but uh, yeah, now we can see it, and we're going to go through this thing. So. Uh, at this point, we're still in the intro, but we are getting closer to the more uh, classic intro. We're still at the point where we see the previous episode, and and we have uh, Scott Bakula kind of doing the narration as Sam, uh, saying, oh, you know, leaping around through time, I sure learned stuff, and what have you. And uh, then we see the last one, and uh, he, here he is, with he's leaped into an actor that uh, is getting ready for a perform performance. Uh, his first mustache isn't good. They put another mustache on him, and then he's all nervous. He has to go out. He hears the Don Quixote music, and uh, at this point, uh, you know the the music starts. The it looks like he's in a pickle, but of course, the second the the show starts, it turns out that he was an understudy, and the actual person that was supposed to do the show he arrives and kind of. Uh, brushes sam off and normally what's funny here and this is then we'll now talk about it a little is i think usually an actor would kind of get depressed that they were going to have their big moment and then the star comes but in this case sam is probably relieved because he doesn't even know what he's doing here right <clears throat> so i thought that was funny and any thoughts from you guys well this is the play uh the men of la mancha which is a really fantastic play um it's inspired by of course the tale of don quixote and whatnot but it, it's it's much more um it, it's a lot more fun especially considering the uh, every attempt in trying to uh adapt this to film has never been, gone exactly well so uh being able to see the play is cool but yeah to your point sam who's discombobulated has no idea what's going on is utterly terrified of stage fright doesn't even know if he can um do do the role and he is saved by the drunken star of the show who has decided to um grace the the crew with his presence and elaborate on how many performance consecutive performances he has had done of this particular show. Are you not a fan of the Peter O'Toole? Is it the, the film of his? Uh, I can't remember it as much, but I do know that um, Terry Gilliam had tried to make man of La Mancha or lost in La Mancha or, or um, Don Quixote for like 40 years and then he oh, finally yeah. got one with um adam driver and that was very forgettable i just i remember that adam driver was in it. <laughs> adam it. driver himself is rather forgettable sometimes yeah uh he he's he's an ugly swole version of keanu reeves who, <laughs> and that's about as far as i'll go there because i don't <laughs> want to insult keanu reeves <laughs> Adam Driver isn't a terrible actor, but I also don't know why they made him a, you know, I think they made him a bit more than he is. I mean, he's not a terrible actor, but like well, I said, maybe I'll a bit over. I'll put it this way. If you, when, if you were to take your thumb and index finger and put it on either side of your Adam's apple, just where your jaw meets, and you squish it and then try to talk, you'd sound a lot like Adam Driver. <laughs> That's we're, we're all going to try it after the show. <laughs> <laughs> Also, this actor that uh, that is uh, coming up to, to Sam is from uh, Northern Exposure. If you're watching, uh, John Cullum, yeah. There's a uh, question in the chat that I would like uh, Script Talk Doctor to, to tackle. It was addressed to him. Um, I think either Tex Rogers at 9.14 p.m. Oh, yeah. Is it normal uh, for executive producers to direct at times? If they so want to. Uh Considering the fact that showrunners sometimes do direct an episode, yes, it's not uncommon. And it's it's pretty cool though. I, I wonder what um, prompted him to really want to direct the story. And I have a feeling it's because of what we see Scott Bakula do toward at the end of the of the episode. I think uh, that might have been a, a a really cool opportunity for for them to get together and do that. 
I, I think you may be right. And I think that this is an episode that's kind of special because there's also, it's, there's two things happening here. He's directing a regular episode of television, but there's also a play that's being put on here uh, with actual actors. And that sort of adds another angle to it. And if yeah. nothing else, like you just said, Ro, it seems like a fun episode for him to be involved in. This seems like an episode that, that Scott Bakula himself I think probably had a lot of fun doing, mm -hmm. and maybe together this is kind of like a bonding moment. He did mention this was one of his favorites in a recent interview where he mm. was actually on stage because he's doing a play right now, and I think there you can go on YouTube and see him talk about the play he's doing plus answering questions of Quantum Leap, and he brings up this one, the Man of La Mancha episode. It was one of his favorites. That's funny because last week when they, they teased this episode, I was like, oh, Scott's going to love that one. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, it is his field of expertise. Yeah, yeah. So well, that's where Scott Bakula comes from. Yeah, he, he started in musical theater, and yeah, he felt very. It, it felt like very comfortable to him. Obviously, you know, there's some piano playing, there's some singing and performing. Um, it, it was. It seemed like it was just right up his alley. By the way, I think that interview that you're talking about, Script, I think I saw it, and somebody, if that's the thing that I'm thinking of, somebody in the audience asked him what he thought of the new Quantum Leap, and he very diplomatically kind of said, oh, they're doing something different now, uh, we had a different pacing, they're doing something more modern, but he didn't say it in a mean way, but if you read between the lines, he thinks about the new show what I think about the new show. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. He just said it in a nice way. Instead of saying, like, like, oh, it's like some crap modern garbage, he's like, it's so modern. You know what I mean? He says it in such a sincere, such a Scott Bakula sincere way, you almost think it's a good thing. Meanwhile, he saw the script and said he doesn't want to be a part of it, but somehow he presents it so nicely that you, you don't even pick up on it. He's oh, old school, man. Yeah, well, that wasn't really the case. He saw the script and he found out he was a part of it, but someone, a woman, was playing his role because he was supposed to have been leapt inside that woman. Uh, for that one moment and then they abandoned it and he when he realized that they were never going to use him anyways they just wanted his uh okay i think mm. um, that's what happened because like again i i know some of the politics behind it and i and i ha and i did review the original pilot on my patreon and yeah at the very end it's just a, a woman and it's and um the daughter one of al's daughters calls that woman sam and that's how you know it's supposed to be Sam who leapt into this body to trigger the the events of the new series. So why do they even need him as an actor if they're not going to feature him? They they named him. He was never used in the uh, that part. That's all part of marketing, just to get people riled up to to see if he's going to show up in the show. That was that was your earlier uh, earlier stages of it. Um, and I mean it's it's really terrible because number one they'd never paid scott Bakula anyways <laughs> because they weren't right. going to use them at all um the fact that they did bring back um uh, another character without spoiling this, this series and and use her infrequently is um oh probably because of their age and the fewer credits they've had recently they were very cheap of course they cost like five dollars i know exactly what you're talking about um i feel like she was just sitting around at home like a knitting a sweater and they just said why don't you come here and she's got nothing to lose i'm not hating on her for doing it either but no. scott Bakula really doesn't need the work you know i think he has enough going on and he's made enough money in his life he's made that ncis money so he doesn't really need it but back to the thing here so they do the <laughs> what what happened Oh, just the everyone take a drink. We talked about the new show. Yeah, it only took it only took you fourteen minutes, Bryce. Earlier it was goats. Well, everyone take a shot. Scott Bakula did talk about. It. So this is the good thing. Um, Sam arrives. Al is funny. I'm trying to remember. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of funny things that Al says in this episode. Al I almost about ducks yeah. and geeks in the orphanage and wanting to be an actor and be in right. the spotlight. And then the oldest profession. He's like, well, technically, like maybe the is. second oldest or. Yeah. I, I almost feel like Al is back. Like la last week, yeah. he was a little more reserved, but mm -hmm. this one, he came in, uh, you know, came in came swinging. In swinging. Yeah. Totally. I agree with you. So he's like, yeah, the prostitution is the oldest in the book, but in a way, that's acting too. And I don't know. This is like funny stuff. And then it's also incredibly inaccurate because what, what do prostitutes <laughs> exchange their bodies for? And if it's anything that is not 
I mean, if it's anything, it means that thing that acquired it is the first profession or, or, or previous profession, such as food, clothing, shelter, defense, bodyguarding, hunting. Like, it's not the first profession. It's like seventh or eighth. <laughs> you have to have something first in order to trade your body for it. Sorry, just, just mm. how how com that's how commerce works, uh, Al. <laughs> But well, he, loves wanna, the, uh, he loves the roar of the grease paint and the smell of the crowd. Right, right. <laughs> I, I wanted to ask you guys something, um, and maybe someone in the chat can kind of chime in too. So uh, you see them talking here, Al and, and Sam, and I think – oh, and by the way, this is I think this is the first time we actually see the other person in any extended clip where they're using Sam's voice, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, multiple times. Yeah. It's, uh, they did it a couple times in this one. Yeah. So, okay. So my getting back to my question, um, Al, uh, I think S Sam said something about not, not jumping or, or choosing to stay. Um, I don't know if they did it here or later on when they see the, 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 uh, piano teacher, the lady, the fellow actress, but Al says, it's not us. It's not up to us to jump. It's up to him. And they obviously make a reference to, to God. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm still um I'm still puzzled as to how um they positioned God in this show uh when uh when it comes to you know the, the force that is that is I guess being held responsible for the jumping and not the technology that they um that they created. Where did I miss something in the history of the show or why is it that God plays such a prevalent role in this show in particular in the way that he does? They had a vague statement in one of the earlier episodes saying that uh, they felt like there was more to him leaping, like something was pulling him in directions that I remember. So it I was the hearing that. episode where they were, you know, whether or not to kill quantum leap. And before that, they really didn't talk about this theory, but it was at that episode where they said, well, Sam has a theory. And, and then they kind of explained it there. And I think it's just the technology they developed has nothing that would constantly be putting him in situations where his help was needed. And the fact that he leaps when he resolves something, I think they're scientists, they created this thing, but that's, nothing to do with what they created so they're they're trying to come up with a logical explanation of why this is how it works yeah the 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 quantum leap program right now is really more of a communication device even even though it initiated the leap it's that that program itself is not actually leaping sam anymore it's just able to keep in contact with him while ziggy tries to compute a new formula to try and bring him back and until they can do that whatever external forces causing sam to leap is kind of what's really in charge and that's the the understanding and you will see in the in the uh, future episodes um they do make other efforts to try and bring sam back um sort of like fighting the the external force that's keeping him away from returning home hmm. but uh for now it's really like as far as they can see based on the patterns of all these leaps so far they are assuming it's God because you have no no better explanation to refer it to, to refer to it, and letting that be uh, the answer until new evidence pre presents itself, which is a very scientific approach. Actually, it's like if, until new evidence presents itself, this is the closest theory we got. <laughs> no, and I would think that if I were them too, because all the science stuff isn't really working, and really every time he does something good and helps somebody, he ends up leaping in most cases. And uh, even the, that time that he was on that train and history changed to suit the weird uh, situation that he was in that they wanted to shut the program down and then he was with that woman. I mean, there are certain things that have happened here that I think that if you had any doubt, you kind of think that there is a higher power kind of guiding you here because, you know, I, 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 I don't know what I would think aside from that. I think that's really the only option you can think of at that moment. Yeah, if you're if you find yourself falling through time, you you have to have at least a little bit of faith that in something at that point, I would think. Extraordinary circumstances and such. Nick, what do you think about it? Um I mean, yeah, they're trying to make logical sense of of something that doesn't make logical sense, which in a in a lot of ways, um, you know, 
a, a, a lot of of faith and belief and stuff like that is uh, people develop seeing something that they can't explain and, uh, you know, trying to come up with the best logical explanation. And throughout history, uh, some of those things have proven, we look back at it and we can't believe people actually believe this. But, um, you know, it, it is part of the, even with stuff that today is considered science, stuff that's taught in schools as, as this is hard science, there's a lot of stuff that um, that's just their educated guess. Um, and it's, you know, I mean, we look in a textbook and they, they want to tell us exactly how something happened 65 million years ago or what's happening on the other end of the galaxy. And the limited knowledge we have, they're taking a little bit of facts and they're, they're making that, that they don't like using the term faith in science, but they, they are, they're taking a, a leap of faith based on what we know. This is what we believe. And so I think they're doing the same thing here. They're scientists. Yes. But you know, they're like, they're eliminating the possibilities and uh, belief that some higher power is directing. This is uh, really what they're left with. And whether they believe that's, that's God or they believe that some other, external force or something, but they believe that there is somebody who's who's controlling it and pulling the strings. Also, to be fair, the show was made in a less cynical time than today. Uh, it, it's, again, I don't want to do the drinking game. In the modern version, uh, <laughs> they, they've changed it, that it's not God that's sending him. Now it's the algorithm. They're like, what's the algorithm doing? I don't know. Where's the algorithm? And I'm like, oh, shut up. Like, I just, those guys annoy me so much. But uh, I just want to oh, highlight I'm, a comment I'm watching here. a kid price. Don't, don't get me drunk. <laughs> <laughs> so well, we already uh, mentioned it you don't have to drink a second time once it comes up so lisa katrian that's no, that's no fun sean L oh, I'm lisa katrian i'm gonna go with lisa katrian if, if i'm saying it incorrectly i want to say it correctly i'm going to continue to make she a mistake put, you know what every week she puts the, the correct pronunciation in the chat and we never we never she acknowledge does? it she doesn't <laughs> yeah, know she's, she's, she's gonna be part of the drinking game man if, if she puts it <laughs> and uh, she's, and right she's told you price you don't have to do the last thing <laughs> <laughs> gave you the out lisa she's the only lisa here how many more lisa katrian katrian that's what i'm going to go with lisa katrian right so uh then yeah i'm going to keep trying for lisa katrian <laughs> so sorry so, lisa <laughs> They mentioned in it in Honeywood Express that they believe God is in charge, and that's what I was saying. Yes, that they uh, that's exactly what happened in that episode, and that was an important episode because the whole project was in danger, and I think that that made them even their faith grow stronger there. So, yeah, I thought that was an important episode, and Lisa also says until season four, they think that he has to complete the mission or he won't leap. They changed it then. Well, that's interesting. We'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, Lisa Katrian. <laughs> we drink. haven't actually gotten to the conversation that Roe was talking about yet, but I think uh, this episode does parallel that episode <laughs> in some some different ways that Sam reacts. And, and I think oh, also, I, <laughs> <clears throat> I believe Al also tells him here, is it here that he says, listen, you used to have that uh, C CD in the office. You know all these songs. Like, you know. This was our theme. Right, this was our our tune, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We used to listen to it all the time working on the project. And then is this also the part that I think that he said, Well, you have to make sure the guy uh doesn't show up. Maybe you make sure he's so drunk he can't even perform, you go on instead of him. And he's like, How how am I gonna do that? And he's like, Sam, you're in Syracuse, nobody cares here, you can totally get away with it or whatever. It's which off, is off, 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 Broadway. <laughs> right. It's off, off, off. Nobody's gonna notice you just sing. How can you risk being uh resist being a star with the spotlight on you? Because Al is an old uh uh an a old drama kid. Yeah, yeah. And of course, uh Al says the guy's doing great. Oh, there's a part that Al's like, he, you're doing terrific, sir, and then but he can't see him, and then he goes, I'm doing terrific. Yeah, that was good. Great. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> and he, yeah, the the whole point is he has to stop him from doing the performance in a few days and falling down those steps and breaking his leg and retiring and all that stuff. And now we we run into Nick's favorite woman in the world, uh, <laughs> Sam's former uh, piano teacher. Yeah, let's, uh, and then I'm, you know, I'm curious, Nick, who's 37 years it's, old in this. 
timeline here. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the thing it, is, it, <clears throat> sorry, go on, Nick. Um, so it, it will expand upon this as, as the thing goes. Uh, it, it's, it's interesting that, you know, everyone instantly is like in, in enthralled with her. But she even talks about it, like I can't get roles like I thought I would because now no. it's all about the younger model, right. and and so you know that. But he he is kind of the puppy love. But I, I thought about that, and I you know, I've I've seen, um, you know, a teacher that uh, I had a crush on in in third grade, and then my my brother's eight years younger than me, and I saw her, and I go, oh man, she is not pretty at all, but. Uh, <laughs> So what was I thinking as a little kid? But, you know, she's this piano teacher um, and he has this crush on her. But I just love that uh, the conversation Ro was talking about is when Al realizes that Sam is contemplating not completing the mission so he can live out his life with her. <laughs> He's that infatuated yeah. that to the Honeymoon Express where he has... This gorgeous woman just throwing herself yes. at him, and he's just—I'd be like, f, f, every f the mission, f the mission." <laughs> yes, the Honeymoon Express lady was it was indeed uh, a very interesting lady. Well, the difference yeah, it, here is that he has a, a legitimate connection to this right. woman, right? Right? Yeah, he did not. Mm -hmm. Script is such a romantic. Mm -hmm. You know what? What? What has pissed me off about Sam? is that all these women are kind of like throwing themselves at him and he's like no no cuz it's not really me and i'm betraying my you know the my the body's uh you know intent but here he's like all over it i'm like yeah i'm 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 going to do it yeah last he's like, night F was, it. yeah yeah but, exactly. but i will say one thing this is a guy who's already had a history the guy that he's leaped into has had a history <laughs> with this lady probably if he was here he'd be doing the same thing you know what i mean uh, b based on what we're seeing of his character he's kind of he likes the ladies and this is a lady that he's had a history with so it's not unreasonable to think that he would have been in on the action anyways so to speak so I'm I'm not saying you're wrong though. I think that in some cases we'll see Sam kind of just say F it and then do exactly what you just said. In this case, maybe he has half an argument to make. Barely, but maybe something. But I like yeah, what Script I, said. I mean the the, the oh. fact that he does have a, a certain connection and it's it's special. I mean it's it uh you know yeah, he's rem he's, he's remembering he's very, he's he's very had special. A crush on her growing up and now she's here. Uh also, to answer Nick or whatever you guys said, uh, I mean, in this episode, she's supposed to be older, and he's when you look on the mirror, he doesn't look like a young guy either. So it's not like he, he leaped into like a 20 year old. So uh, this relationship, I guess, uh, makes sense within the context, whatever is going on. Of course, then the main star sees her, and he's kind of all flirty and charming and whatever. Right. And then he says, We'll go to this party together to celebrate your thing. And then here we see that. Uh, Sam has this other young lady here, uh, also that, from Northern Exposure, and he kind of uh, plays yeah, patty cake with her from time to time too. That's not Sherilyn Fenn, is it? That is Janine Turner. Okay. Well, that's uh, kind of yeah. Later, they said that she uh, he wouldn't touch her with his his uh, his lance or whatever. So I don't think they actually do fool around. She just really wants to. Yeah, she really wants to, and he's always been resistant i guess oh uh, the, the, so you're saying I, that ray the actor is actually resisting her mm -hmm. that's why according to leap into yeah yeah according to uh, the, the makeup, makeup hair dresser are so, we sure about that because somebody else said something about the workouts that they have together or something right. her. he keeps implying um, like, the, like they're spending a lot of quality time but what do i know maybe maybe you guys are right Everyone's well, screwing then, with awesome. everyone's psyche yeah. in this. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. that's she, true. She's doing all this gossip stuff around, and she and she uses um, what's his name, uh, Manny, who's played by Ernie Sabala, mm -hmm. who actually did this show professionally before, like not Quantum Leap, but the Man of La Mancha show. Uh, those two seem to coordinate and and uh, spew rumors in order to get what they want, so right. to speak. Right, and uh. uh... I mean, uh, sometimes I, I think Sam could be more cooperative. He doesn't have to push everybody away. You know, this this young lady here seems all right to me. But <laughs> so when she well, for, she's like the first uh, uh, actress for uh, what's her face, 
ah, I forget her name. In the play, the 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 prostitute in the play. Uh, anyway, she's like the main actress, and uh, the, the countess, when, right? Not a countess. I forget. What it's her name uh, is. yeah, I forgot her name. It starts with a D, if I'm not mistaken. Ducant or something like that. Anywho, when she first showed up and Sam first leaped in, and I was like, what is Nick complaining about? I would totally be all about her. And then I didn't realize that they were introducing in the piano t- uh, teacher later. Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah that, that was that was my thing. It's like all these guys are going crazy about the piano teacher when it's like Dulcinea. they have this woman trying to throw Dulcinea, themselves. There we go, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, yeah. She did imply... That that Sam's character he had uh, ghosted her because she said, didn't didn't you you know that they had been writing letters and stuff like that and then she hadn't heard from him for a while so I think he kind of his his character had moved on right it's also possible to just fall out of the habit they grew apart yeah. they grew apart <laughs> that's what Sean is going for. Well, I had friends. I I left Pennsylvania when I was sorry my microphone uh, when I was fourteen, and I was writing letters to friends because this was the early nineties, and eventually I just fell out of it. So sometimes you grow apart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then he's here, and he's showing her that he plays piano, and he does an exercise that reminds her of a student that she once had. And then he's like, "I'm not the same guy that I was when you knew me back in the day." She's like, no, it's okay. I'm not the same lady. And they're like, it's oh. so awkward. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then they're then like, they let's get, get down. Yeah, let's get busy. <laughs> and then uh, the next day, they're already like, you know, the morning after the thing. And uh, I, this this before you move on to that, Sam gets laid too. Though, just to let you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. So Sam's move there is to talk about. You know, trying to get her to talk about her student kids, <laughs> and <laughs> and they must have crushes on you because I had crushes on you. It was just kind of a weird move. Can I ask? Uh, he's, he's talking about himself, but it's just kind of a weird subject if you're the woman. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just as a because I'm going through my notes as you're you're going through this. Did we already go past the bar scene? No, no, not yet. Okay, all right. Wait, is the bar scene the one that they were here and she wanted to get busy with him? And yeah, oh, yeah, where she's, oh, yeah, she's fondling him. <laughs> when they walked in, I swear to God, Dennis Leary is playing the piano. I don't Dennis know what you're Leary. talking about. <laughs> Keep going back. Keep going back. The guy looks exactly like Dennis Leary. I don't... Keep when going back. Going going with back piano. Further, yeah. As soon as they walk in, they, they he starts playing the... Uh, a very fancy La Macha. That was him right there. Oh, well, just kind of look like oh, that okay. looks more like James Woods. Yeah, it does. All right, what? what? <laughs> no, it, it, it kind of does and, look and like Farrah, Dennis Leary. And Farrah yeah. Fawcett. Yeah. <laughs> when I was watching it today, I was like, "Holy crap!" I didn't know he was in this. All right, I'm sorry. I didn't. He kind of looks like him, but I bet I, I don't know if it is, but it does kind of look like him. I'll give you that. All right, yeah. sorry. Anyhow, they get busy. They're back in the thing, and now uh, uh, she, they, uh, the director wants Sam to do a scene with her. And of course, he doesn't know what he's doing. So Al pops up with the with the script, and Sam is able to somehow recite his lines. She's doing well though. And then the big star comes out, and he's like, "I love what she's doing so much. How about if she sings something for us?" And then she sings, and once she starts singing, she sings really well. The guy is like. From now on, this this is my new uh, co-star, or whatever he says. Mm-hmm. And uh, Dulcinea. I just, yeah. What'd you say? Dulcinea. Dulcinea. She, she's Dulc- no longer the understudy. She's the main. She's no longer the understudy. She's Dulcinea. And then, uh, basically, uh, it seems like all is well. Uh, but well, now this is there's where Sam proposes the idea that maybe he doesn't want to leap if he lets the actor break his leg right right he, 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 he doesn't want to stay right no, we're he, not there yet it's after this scene it is after the scene oh, I thought it yeah because the they're scene. they're setting them up they're conniving here she's like you do your thing but i thought and... here he's already thinking well, i don't know 
no, no, he's it. he's in bliss here at, during the rehearsal. After this bar scene, she's oh. setting him up. Well, here, and, but I think Scripter's right. First of all, he wants to stay with her. Then he's in this oh, yeah. bliss euphoria. Then he comes in and they do the whole fooling him. And she's like, oh, this uh, this actress, she went up to the room of the star and they're doing naughty things together. They're rehearsing. They're rehearsing in his mm-hmm. private uh, rehearsal room and yeah, whatever. Yeah. All right, so, I may have misunderstood. So then he shows up and it's a big misunderstanding because he hears a woman in there. He thinks it's her, but it's a whole different woman because mm-hmm. this star, you know, it's just like a train station of women for this star in Syracuse for some reason. Yeah, uh, you're right. I misunderstood the, the question. And then uh, at this point, I think Sam's like, ah, you know what? Screw all these people. I don't care. <laughs> like, screw him. Screw her. Like, I don't even care about this thing. Fine. I'll save him. I won't save him. Like, I don't know. He's a complete, like, he's lost faith in everything. I and really then... like that that shot, and it made me wonder if, um, and you know, I used to watch ep- episodes and reruns back in the day. No, no, go back to him talking to Get Sam. The piano, yeah. Uh, it made he's sitting there just playing, and he's talking to Sam, and I'm like, I'm wondering if anyone would has ever walked in on him, and then that made me think, is there ever an episode where someone sniffs Sam out, and they're like, you're not who you say you are, and they actually start kind of there's figuring I, out we can't really like say that. anything yet because it yeah. does yeah but i will say this this is the one of the rare times you'll ever see a proper 360 shot and a proper 360 <laughs> shot is one rotation you never yeah. go more and you and you keep it well paced and that's and it, it's you, oh, yeah, you that's anchor good. your your frame on your your anchor yeah your frame on one object and that's what you rotate around in this case is the piano not the actors and it's really it's really well done what you get you know these days is you get the anchor on both the actors and they just spin around them three four five times while they're mm-hmm. talking to try and increase drama doesn't ever work because it's lazy no, and stupid <laughs> now remind me here this is she tries to sell the idea that sam was kind of with her yes okay so she sells that idea i mean while causing more friction well and... it's, it's it's actually no it's it's um it's the uh, uh the fallout of that idea because that's what oh yeah um, that's why he's sulking yeah. That's what Nicole is so, is worried about. And when the other actress comes in and she's kind of haggard, it's because she drank a lot so that she could get with uh, the, the other actor. With Manny. Uh, Sancho. Who, yeah, <laughs> who is Manny, who is played by Ernie Sabella. Mm-hmm. And then we find out from the hairstylist uh, that the hair, hair and makeup. Um, uh, she says, yeah, they spent the night or something like those that. Those two spent the night. Sam's character would never touch her. And yeah. And that's where the 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 we find out right. there's irony. Both of them know that, both of them think that each other spent the night, but only one now knows that's not the case. And then here, this guy is wobbling, and Sam still does the right thing. He saves him, and then uh, he doesn't break his hip or do ruin his whole health or whatever. But I he thought gets- they I thought they were going to do you know how they usually have kind of like a little cameo, either it's Michael Jackson or a song. I thought this was like the first utterance of "Break a Leg." <laughs> I think that's a lot older. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think it's uh, older. Sam so, is dark in that moment, though. He's like, he fully means it, like break a leg, because he knows that it's going to ruin this guy's life. Mm-hmm. But at the end, he still does the right thing because he's a good guy. And there's a Scott Bakula run. And then well, he gets uh, told the truth right before it, doesn't he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So then he's like. True. You know, he was going to let him go up there. He was going to let him fall and break his leg because this is not the best way to do this. It could have resulted in both of them having some broken mm-hmm. bones. Yeah. But Manny ended up telling him the truth, and then he runs, catches him. They do a reset, and now Scott Bakula gets to perform the show. Is it actually him performing? I was. It is. Like, but wait a second. I, and everything. I, I, I Doesn't like he the only idea. tell him afterwards? Here, he only tells him afterwards. He did the right thing prior. Only after he saves him does the Manny guy tell him the truth yeah. that, that they made it up. So True. Sam's a good guy. He didn't need the incentive. He just mm, he yeah. has a conscious sense at the end and does the right thing. Yeah. And then uh, the guy that he saved is like, you know what? I'm not feeling so great today. Let's let you know Ray do the thing. Basically, mm-hmm. Sam he can do it. And then Sam just goes out and you know he just does his thing. And yes, Sean, it is Scott Bakula. Scott Bakula sings these songs and. Probably has a great time doing it. He came from <laughs> musical theater. He was nominated for a, a Tony Award prior to doing this show. So for him, this is probably like, you know, 
this is this is where he feels at home this kind of thing and uh you know this the sequence at the end here was uh was extra long and i actually enjoyed it a lot uh just to see you know an added um an added look of of scott bakula's talent um again somebody that uh, was not really too familiar with the show and or the the actor per se he's not one of those actors where i'm like oh i'm going to tune in for sure so it was really nice to you know to be able to kind of grow with with you guys and just watch the show and then kind of uh, discover all this stuff for me for the first time right and i think that if you do watch this show you start liking him more i yeah. mean for me, I, w when people talk about uh, Star Trek Enterprise, the fact that he's there is a big selling point for me. Like I, Scott, it is Beckham, for me too. Him being an Enterprise oh, yeah. ma makes Enterprise I mean, a whole lot better than me. what it is. And Enterprise is my least favorite Star Trek. I'm when I'm done with my Voyager rewatch, I'll probably go into uh, to Enterprise just because of Scott Bakula. I'm on season two. Did you just start watching it recently, Enterprise? You know, I start TV shows and then I fall off, but uh, I started it, I fell off, I went back to it, and now I'm, I just started uh, episode four of season two, I think. And, and now that you've seen me that he's there, doesn't that make it a plus? Like, well, I liked Enterprise because he's in it, really. That was that was like a main selling point when the show was on and I would just catch it <laughs> here and there. And, you know, during my life, I was like, oh, I like Scott Bakula. I'll just watch this. I'm just dreading the whole Zindi uh, storyline. Hey, yeah. spoiler. <laughs> I like that show. I thought it was good. I know Nick is annoyed and he doesn't like that I like it, but <laughs> what can I do? Yeah, I like it. Nick, are you fun. there? Uh, he's muted. Nick left. He's so <laughs> disgusted. Sorry. Nick heard that. I said fourth Star season Trek. Was, uh, <laughs> fourth season was um, okay. I, I can say nice things about Enterprise on times. <laughs> uh, in any case, Sam leaps. He's he's done with the thing. Him and Al kind of walk off. It's a, you know, he goes and uh, then he arrives at this kind of cemetery in a spooky setting. I'm and, so excited for next week. <laughs> and then uh, what happens is they even do a little bit of uh, encore here. Hey, oh, I, didn't, I didn't see that. For the whole casting crew, I thought that was so charming. Yeah, right, and this is this is Deborah way. Pratt. That's Deborah yeah. Pratt right there. Did they get like a real play to come in and, and shoot this episode with them? Maybe. Well, everyone on, on set was an actor, so what they ended up doing is they shot. I don't know if they shot the entire play um, as a performance. Or if they just did specific sections, I would assume they did specific sections just because of time. Because you're looking at like yeah. on average an eight to nine day shoot, you don't really want to go over, especially for for an episode. But it, I mean, the fact that they rented out a what looks like a theater um, was probably pretty cheap <laughs> for them <laughs> compared right. to other locations that they would do, because you're basically on that set and and shooting at the hotel that the cast is patroning at the same time, so it could keep the budget a little low, and. Uh, they're, well, you're not, it just made me outdoors. think that, you know, if they, if they, um, you know, kind of worked off the back of of an actual event that was going, and then they used that cast and crew, because at the end it was like the way they did that, you know, so different from that. But that that also just could be that uh, Scott Bakula wanted to do that because he's from that background. Yeah. I think they had a few numbers they needed to do. They did it, and uh, they probably, like Script said, they worked it out in the way that it's the most cost-effective. But th this was probably a fun episode for them to do. That's probably why Don, Don Belisario was involved. That's why Scott Bakula seems happy. Uh, this is exactly up his alley. Even Al seems happy. Th this is, I think, it, it's considered, you know how sometimes you're in school, but you go on a field trip? I feel like this is like a field trip episode that oh, there's yeah. That's some a great added value. It. Yeah, of the, them it, just having fun and enjoying themselves. And even like Donald Belisario comes out and he says, you know what? I'm going to direct this. He even had the and, rotating uh, 360 shot. Oh, yeah. But the other part, too, is like this is an episode that was rarely re aired because the musical rights to that play mm -hmm. are uh, expensive. Mm -hmm. So. 
that that's the other part too. Yeah, I don't even think you could probably see this on the streaming channels too often, unless the streaming channels also ha own the rights to that music. So if you have it on DVD or Blu-ray, uh, you're in good luck. You can, you can revisit it all the time. And I would assume that, because I, I don't see it on my special features, but if they did shoot the whole play, I would be uh, surprised that they didn't put it on as a special feature for you to watch. It seems um, like a lot of work. <laughs> it yeah, seems like a lot, and I don't know. a lot of work, because you're looking at like a two-hour show. <laughs> right, and they don't really need it for the episode. They have like the same... They showed you right. this song and this setup and this uh, you know, blocking with the first actor. Then Sam kind of recreates the same thing we saw at the beginning, but he's doing it. So that's really economical. And then there's just a few other scenes that they did. I, I highly doubt that they filmed the whole uh, show. Well, th th that's kind of what I was saying is like outside of, you know, Scott and the, um, you know, uh, the, um, piano teacher lady you know if if the rest of the crew were actors who were on the road doing the play that there could be a real whole play and then they just had scott come in and do sections um but anyways it, i'll have to do some research on that uh try, I, I try to figure it out because it, it intrigued me but not enough yet to look it up i think they filmed whatever they needed but uh it was nice to see Scott Bakula do this. This is something that he's very passionate about. And yeah, the guy is talented. I mean, I, I, I think that all the other stuff that he's done in his career is very nice, but really this, this is a very tough role to play. And I think he was just perfect for this role. Just in general, as Sam Beckett, perfect casting. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and um, Al too. Al, was, Al is good as usual. There was one other little tidbit. That I I kind of found funny at the end, um, when she makes the, I was really bad this episode. I, normally I try to keep characters' names, but they just it's have okay. Not gone we my head, we but, understand. What are you looking for? I got them written down. <laughs> okay, so you have the the original lead actress of the play, which is Michelle from Northern. So Exposure. Michelle um, makes it uh, the the deal. Uh, with Manny with, Sancho, with man, yeah, Manny. Um, and uh, you know, she she tells him, Okay, well, go up, wait up in your room, like, like you do this for me, I'm, I'm gonna make your dreams come true. And you kind of, you know, in that moment, I thought, Well, he's just gonna be sitting up there waiting, like, she's not gonna actually fulfill that. She, she has her own goals, <laughs> why would she ever actually? make good on that and then she does but then he doesn't keep his end of the bargain he tells sam right you know, well that, like, that goes to had a lot of zombies <laughs> when you do naughty things for favors uh sometimes uh it backfires that's the lesson here <laughs> yeah. well there's even a moment with uh sam after he goes on and he tells Manny, he tells him break a leg, and Manny kind of slides down the steps, and it's like <laughs> Sam does that not, does not have a good opinion of you, sir. Right? No, he doesn't like him either. But uh, yeah, th this was an interesting. The thing is, is that uh, because of the musical numbers and everything was going on, it's almost like a shorter episode. Uh, the plot is very straightforward and simple. Uh, it, it almost with the, the musical numbers feels more brief than usual, which is why I think we have less to say about it. It's really kind of just straightforward, but it's still a fun episode, even with all of that. I could talk a bit more about it. No, no, no. Ahead. I'm not saying we have nothing more to say about it, but I'm saying <laughs> that it, it, a, lo a lot of times, I think in episodes until now, first of all, I mean, this is bookended by like five minutes song here and five minutes songs here. And then the middle, there's a song. So I'm just saying that the episode, in a way, the narrative of it is is shorter. Sure, it's a bit but, more uh, direct. Yeah, I mean, but again, I mean, they, they effectively every scene is quite effective. It doesn't feel like there's any fat. In this no, at no all. fat it's, at all. Every, really every scene, I agree with you, is perfect. And we get more Al, which I I'm always a fan of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, Al is good in this one. I I like when we get more Al, and actually, Al is funny, which. When they let him be Al, I, he's funny. The, mm -hmm. the, the there was one part that he was like, "What am I doing in Syracuse?" And he's like, "A lot of people ask themselves that question." Sam, <laughs> <laughs> she could tickle my ivories any day. <laughs> right, exactly. He had like a comeback for every single thing that Sam said. 
I also there's... appreciated the irony of the title because it is literally spoiling the resolution. Right. He caught a falling star. <laughs> That's how he solved his problem. <laughs> <laughs> right. But it sort of has a, n- a number of different meanings. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> so, I didn't even so, catch on to the, the pun. Only at the end, when you see the thing, do you really kind of say, oh, okay, well, that's what... Because you could also claim that the lady that he see, spends the night with is sort of catching a falling star, I guess. Sure. I well, guess. so Sam. Sam had an, uh, uh, an obsession with her as a, a kid, and he gets to live the impossible dream. Right. So he's and catching he... a falling star. So it has multiple meanings. I... I, yeah. I I could kind of go on about this, but uh, I feel like this this episode was brilliant for framing it with Don Quixote and and all of the things those characters go through to mm. compare it to Sam. I, I thought it was wonderful. I thought that was pretty clever, too, because Don, uh, you know, uh, because Sam himself is sort of like a Don Quixote. So mm-hmm. it actually th- this just this episode, it seems simple, but there's a lot of different layers to it. And uh it's it's fun it's uh it's effective and it's it's a it's a good episode and you know it's interesting that scott bacula like script said and i heard him say this this is one of his favorite episodes so it's good there's a there's a scene after sam uh spends the night with uh nicole (laughs) and al shows up and he's sniffing around him like he's making faces like what did He's like, he knows that Sam did something yeah. and just Al being Al and like sniffing around him, like trying to figure out what happened. I know that face. I've seen that face in the mirror after a night of passion. <laughs> like, you know, that... it cracked me up, man. <laughs> yeah. That, and then that's... of course Sam thinking like it was his soul that connected. I'm like, okay, dude, mm-hmm. you're, 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 you're living out a fantasy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you're also kind of exercising a regret out of your body i regret that you could never do uh at least not for another four more years given the age difference of these two being a decade it'd be uncouth to for him to be 15 and her to be 25 that's that's Mm -hmm. where you get on the news um he's he's now able to get that kind of out of his system but you also kind of notice is that he sam has a type he really likes very talented ambitious brunettes and she was a great singer i was yeah Mm -hmm. i was good singer well yes when uh, when she showed up, I was like, "Oh yeah, I totally get what uh, <laughs> Nick is saying. Like, why'd they choose her?" But then she's like, "Oh, I I stopped going to auditions because I saw the talent getting younger and younger." And I was like, "Oh, that makes sense." And, and then, then she, she sings, singing, yeah. and I'm like, "Wow!" So mm. I thought she was a good choice. I I understand where Nick is coming from, but I think she worked really well for this episode. She she yeah, must have been and, the right choice. I I, I'm not saying she's ugly. No, it's I'm just, just <laughs> you're surprised by the choice. You're just saying yeah, that and, as opposed to other that in contrast to some of the other ladies, she may not be as uh, right. Yeah, she's um, not Terry Hatcher or Mitzi. Uh, yeah, as, as or a the show lady that on the train. Consistently the had train. very beautiful women throwing themselves at him every week, <laughs> and him running. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I, I, it's it's a fair point, Nick. It's a fair point. It's not he, Nick isn't saying something that's completely ridiculous. Uh, she doesn't rank up uh, among some of those other ladies, but within the context of the of the crush of the childhood crush, and that she sings nicely, which I guess uh, Sam likes it when somebody sings nicely. Mm-hmm. I can only speculate. I don't know. Yeah, sure. I, go with like, I hate music. <laughs> I like music. You said I hate music. I like music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, this was a fun episode. I uh I, I remember even as a kid I liked it. It was something different. And uh I think that even then I could tell that it was Scott Bakula singing. So it does Pri- is Price the only um uh person on the panel that that doesn't watch and require and just kind of goes by memory or why I, I, I yeah he's oh, okay. he rewatched it before okay. but 
not as sometimes it seems like oh i don't remember like you'll get to a part and you're like oh i don't remember this uh when i first i'll tell you why sometimes what happens is uh you guys usually very close to the show you watch the episode and sometimes i watch it a couple hours ago yeah right at the the beginning of the week or something like maybe five days earlier i watch it the uh, day of right i watched it this morning so suddenly five days earlier i'm like what did they say here what did they say here so i try to wait with it and then get closer to the episode but on certain <laughs> occasions that hasn't happened happen. that's why you think that i haven't watched it but i actually have watched it gotcha lisa could try it that's why we get the great commentary sometime where he's like uh, uh, something happens I don't know, I don't <laughs> and then and then you'll see me in the background just like <laughs> <laughs> it he's got a, he's got a spreadsheet yeah i also but, think price doesn't get enough sleep <laughs> might be what the was case. it you were you watching something the other day and you said that you gave a movie a review he's like oh it's it's not great but it's it's you know one of those really good like you know 3 a.m and you're having trouble going to sleep <laughs> watch this movie like, 3 a.m a little <laughs> insight into his viewing habits <laughs> you're it doing a night sometimes. owl and i'm like on the west coast and i'm like oh man i gotta get to bed and i'm like wait a second price <laughs> is still going he's over on the other coast Nick's like 3 a.m it's like six for him yeah yeah yeah, yeah. what can i do <clears throat> the night owl is interesting mm. in any case uh so, so yeah i think not only is this a good episode i liked seeing where he's going for the next one the next episode is actually uh i it's a, it's a strange episode i think that i don't know if everybody feels the same way about the next one i think it's one that you either really like it or maybe you don't like it so much i really hope i really like it <laughs> just it's, for a- aesthetic wise they there's the the lightning crashing it's a cemetery he's in a detective suit there's a woman coming out of a tomb i'm like Oh my God, it's filmed in the 80s on 80s film with 80s lighting, and it's a murder mystery. Yeah. I am sold. <laughs> That's too funny. I, I hope it's good. It's it's an unconventional episode, the next one, but uh, I, I think it'll be a very interesting discussion once we get to it. Now, are um, you saying because you remember it from all those years, or you already watched it? <laughs> no, I, I. First of all, I remember it from years ago. Second, I actually, in recent years, I rewatched that episode, and even recently, at some point, I ran into that episode and watched it. So I've seen that episode over the years at least three times, and I've always thought to myself that it's kind of, kind of different that episode. But it's, it, I like that this show does different things. So it, it's certainly. Uh, like I said, I've I've met people that have or seen people online that have said that this that's like their favorite episode, and some people are like, oh, I don't know if I like that one. So I don't know I don't know if it's a consensus, but it's certainly an interesting episode. And uh, it also stars one of the staff writers, right? On the show. Uh, Deborah Pratt, and the, she's one of the producers and staff writer, and she's the wife of uh, the creator of the show. Yeah, yeah. So, so she's going to be there in the next one. Hmm. Uh, and I guess, uh, I guess we kind of went over this, uh, this episode. Like I said, it's not that I wanted to talk about it less. It was just very straightforward. And, uh, you know, a third of it was uh song and dance and stuff. So it kind of left us with less, uh, less to really analyze, but I, I guess we... it for you. it's a, it's a great cheat type of episode. It's just, uh, the, another version of that is the, um, the time travel episodes where they basically just shoot the same scene and, uh, for one day in various different ways, but they have slightly different alterations because they're reliving different p- characters perspectives of that event. Uh, that's usually a, for budget reasons for like a bottle episode of source where it's like, Oh, we only really have to have a couple's camera setups. We have this character's perspective. We do three, four takes, get that same set reset this person's character's perspective, do three, four takes of that. And he, and then the rest of the scene is like in a, courtroom and everybody's testimony of that one big scene that they did that one day like 10 12 hours maybe 16 and it's just recut it in so you don't have a whole lot to talk about because they're retreading the same story over and over again with slight alterations of a different point of view it's a some people use it as a rashomon it's also a vantage point technique it's it's really just to to save money and and keep things simple and in this case here the musical is such a, a significant part of the of the episode that everything else that happens around it is kind of quick and effective and to the point 
So it's not whole much, not a whole lot to elaborate on, and not a whole lot of conflict because it's a ticking clock type of thing. He's, he's right. got to prepare himself on the day of show to either not just save the actor, but also possibly go on stage. Uh, in, in it's still set. well made. It, 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 it's everything that you said is one hundred percent correct, and still they managed to churn out an episode that's kind of fun and uh, and even memorable in a way. Mm-hmm. It's like you remember this episode. I don't know if I like it as much as Scott Bakula does, but I remember the episode. It's a very memorable episode. You remember that you went out and he did the singing and he did the thing. And the final thing I'll say is, is that uh, part of this show works so well is because you cast somebody like Scott Bakula. If let's say you would have chosen a guy that doesn't know how to sing or doesn't know how to do this kind of uh, musical theater or whatever it is, and he's just kind of trying, then it wouldn't have come off as convincing. Uh, the mm-hmm. fact that Scott Bakula really knows how to do it, then you're like, oh, Sam Beckett really is like capable of anything. You know what I mean? It almost kind of raises his whole uh, superhero type of thing because it's really him doing it and he's good at it. Yeah. Back when actors were the triple threat. Yeah, that's right. Uh, um, so I, I did a little research because it was bugging me now. Um, so my theory's wrong. It wasn't a play. Uh, that they were aping off of because uh, it it the the play had previously been in seventy seven, but I will credit Quantum Leap for probably be bringing it back because two years later it was back and was doing a world tour. So uh, for the maybe Don, they raised uh, awareness for the play. Are, are you talking about yeah. like the Broadway level play version? Of yes. It, at least? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's I think that's accurate. Yeah. Yeah, they brought it's it funny because because as me as a kid, I I became aware of this play because of an episode of Wishbone in the nineties. I remember so. Wishbone, the Jack yeah. Russell Terrier dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I know of this play just because so many independent theaters or amateur theater um, groups would travel around doing it, and I, I there was a very small theater in the town I grew up with, so we'd always get a new show every couple weeks, and it was I lived very close to it, so I was able to always walk over get a ticket for like three bucks and see a show after school um but yeah like on the broadway side of things i i think you're 100 percent right that only in 91 or 92 uh man of returned to uh, broadway yeah and then start a world tour again yep so i i I think that it certainly helped raise awareness for it uh oh it definitely helped raise financing for for the play for whoever wanted to revitalize it (laughs) right i mean now it was like in the in the mix and the show was picking up here and the good things were happening so this this definitely raised awareness even i as a kid remember seeing this i kind of liked this thing just from i I was intrigued by the play just because i watched this episode i'm like oh this is cool and i kind of remember even until this day remember the songs so it's memorable like i said um I guess let's just go one by one. Let's sum up what we thought of the episode. And uh, I I think we're pretty good this week. Let's start with Ro. How did you feel about it? Um, You know, going in, uh, I didn't think I was going to like it uh, for some reason. I don't know what. And it wasn't uh, Nick's um, portrayal of the the woman. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But um, I ended up really liking it. I think, uh, you know, once uh, once we got to the end, especially, I I kind of retroactively realized how special this this episode was um, for for many reasons. Obviously, you know, kind of putting putting all the 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 puzzle pieces together, Belisario directing it, uh, Bakula, you know, doing some really, really wonderful performances and the singing um, was really great. And I really enjoyed that. So I think um, I think it really. uh, it really surprised me. Um, I liked it a lot. I agree. Uh, script, how did you feel about this episode? Uh, brought back some nightmares in high school drama class, but outside of that, <laughs> it was pretty entertaining and fun. Uh, I liked the simplicity of it. I liked the, we got a bit more Al as Al. I liked the, the brief conflict that Sam had when it came to wanting to stay with, um, uh, you know, a, a schoolboy's crush, as it were. And, of course, the musical aspect was really fun. I mean, it's always more fun when you're actually in the audience to participate on that part. But this was the, the next best thing on, on television. For sure. Sean, what did you think about this? 
This is probably my one of my four favorite episodes. The more we talk about it, the more I love it. Um, forgive me because I I have notes on, on it that are okay. uh, thoughts about it. Um, so when they're watching Sam perform, uh, the two characters from Northern Exposure, uh, they're standing on the steps, and and the other Dulcinea puts her arms around the the other guy. And says he'll, he's not as good as you. For some reason, of all the time travel things that I've watched in my life, the the face that he made just struck me. And and them hanging out, uh, the fact that I don't even know if I'm going to be able to do this thought justice. It's just he's already lived an entire life where his his career is ruined from a breaking leg, and now. He's at the first moment of a brand new life, and he has no clue that that has happened in his universe. That that brought me to tears, and I'm like, this is an obvious like time travel thing, but why is it affecting me so much right now? It's like you've lived an entire life, now you get to live an entire new life, and I just thought that was great. Uh, the beginning of the episode, when the piano teacher showed up, I was like, is God just screwing with Sam at this point? <laughs> just a mess with him. Yeah. I think he uh, threw him a bone. Uh, so that's literally the rest of my thought. Um, er, er. By the uh, <laughs> right. er. by the by the end of the episode, and you frame it with Don Quixote, who is he's chasing. <laughs> he's a crazy guy. Uh I only just saw uh, the movie with Peter O'Toole like a year ago or two because my job, I had to do quality control on it. And uh, uh, he's a crazy person that believes in justice and, and fighting monsters and stuff. But, you know, he's not in his right mind, which speaks to Sam, who has a Swiss cheese brain, <laughs> and he's doing this impossible journey and, and stuff. Um Oh, crap, I lost my thought. Uh, I thought this whole episode was a really good teaching lesson to him. So at the beginning, I was like, God is screwing with Sam. Because why the hell would his piano teacher that he had a crush uh, on show up at just randomly? By the end, I was like, that uh, I can't remember the song. I was trying to find it whenever we were talking. Um, Dulcinea is singing something like, what is his intent? And even Al is like, what right. is, what do you think you're going to accomplish? Uh, we don't even, we, I think he says, you don't even have to finish the leap or finish the job to end up leaping. And uh, I thought that was, it was so brilliant to frame it against this play and also be a teaching lesson. It's like, uh, Sam, you're leaping within your lifetime. You're going to encounter people and, and, you'll have a pers personal connection to it. You're going to have to live chasing and, and or uh, what did they say? Chase from afar or love from afar, but no, and always chasing, which is all Don Quixote. Yeah. And then uh, uh, another aspect, uh, I think uh, based on all of this, uh, I think this is what makes uh, a favorite episode for me is, where it puts me in the mindset of a character that never actually appears. So I am thinking about the force that is pulling him through time. And it's like, I'm like trying to figure out the motivations of something we never see, which I think, yeah, it just adds to, <sighs> if you're, if you're getting me to think outside the episode of to places or characters that, that aren't on screen, I, I find that wonderful. And like then, Mira from Cheers, Norm's wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Frazier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, sorry, that's a lot. It's just uh, no, you, the, you, you, the more we talk about it, the more I like this episode. But, Dude, it's, uh, it's got layers, and you picked up a lot of them. So that's that's good. Yeah, I agree. By the way, uh, I like this comment from Tex Rogers that he said that. Uh, there's sure. a there's a part that Scott Bakula, I mean Sam tells uh, uh, Al. I don't know how to act. Uh, what am I going to do? And it's kind of funny because he actually does know how to act. So I don't know. Yeah. There's a kind of inner joke here. 
Well, yeah. they even give uh, they give uh, Sam a way out. He's like, you have a photographic memory. Start reading, and he's holding right. up the script for him and stuff. Lisa oh, Katrian, that, that, that bit there. Lisa was, Katrian uh, thinks what Sam did was wrong. I guess that maybe is that. I do. I agree with that. Well, yeah, that was another aspect. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, I mean, are you talking about spending the night with a piano yes. teacher? Right. Well, this this made you believe that Sam is human, where he's not just all perfect. He has six doctorates. He can. He's played at Carnegie Hall. He's never had a real job interview. This one, he was like, "Go break a leg," and it's like, "Wow, Sam is." Sam has gone in a totally opposite direction from everything we've seen him be. But is Lisa Hash, upset? Hashtag not my Sam. Oh, wait, is, is Lisa <laughs> upset because he spent the night with the piano teacher or because he was kind of being a douche later? No, I think the first part, because that the comment was from like, earlier when we were oh. talking about that. Yeah, because it's um, Sam was being led more so with his heart and genitals than his mind. Yeah, mm -hmm. And he, he was vulnerable because, again, it, it, like it's a big what if situation and a good what if situation what if you're the very first woman you ever fell in love with who was too old for you at the time is now your exact same age and you yeah, have a chance to do, right? i'm not i'm not 15 anymore you mm -hmm. know you know I, the thing is is that i understand i can respect people that maybe have an issue with him suddenly doing this and it's not something that i'm dismissing but you know I, I forgive him. I understand the situation he was in. He also left into a body of a guy that was already doing that with that piano teacher anyways at some point. It, it wasn't It wasn't such a stretch to think that he could do it. It's and, not as egregious as the Wonder Woman 84 scenario where it's a stranger right. being possessed by another by a familiar thing. This is one where there's, yes. Wait, there, I, didn't, there's I, didn't, I didn't I didn't. think them. we were going to talk about Wonder Woman 84, so take a drink. <laughs> it's not um, on the list now we gotta do it every week because you knew it was gonna come up <laughs> but um the thing is is that yes there is yeah. established history there there's an established relationship there is definitely there's no ambiguity with regards to consent if the real person was there and not in sam's body like that's that's the one thing you can actually be more um assure of given the history they the, the nicole the, the piano teacher says we graduated at the same time we kept in touch we wrote letters to each other, you know, and throughout the 60s. And then, you know, stamps got expensive or time gets away from you. And you, you always put off what you could do the next day and so forth. And now they've been reunited again. So, I mean, one thing that I think kind of hurts this episode is the fact that Al doesn't say what happens, doesn't tell Sam what happens to the guy he's with, the other actor, and Nicole. Yeah, they should have. Yeah, they don't say I anything on this one. They're just like, ah, screw it. Like, mm -hmm. if he said, like, you know... They got married uh, Nicole or whatever. and them, they end up, you know, mm, they, yeah. they continue their love. They start an acting school for kids in Syracuse and they live happily ever after because that's what it's supposed to be. And the extra singing at the end kind of uh, ate up uh, some some time to be, uh, you know, put some of those scenes in at the end. Would you yeah. say it's a plot hole, row? I would say it's a plot hole. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> but Take a this, drink. this debate is... Uh, takes me back to when Stargate Universe was on because this was something that the fandom was all up and roaring that show because they had these people who were stranded but they had alien technology where they could transport their consciousness across galaxies into other bodies and so they in that show they had ones where like oh I'll go I'll go home and spend some time with the wife in this other soldier's body <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah. it's yeah, a show, you know. So, sometimes you got to be forgiving. That's that's the way I see. So, 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 so I, 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 I could see how people could look at it like he's not being totally honest with her because she's thinking she's sleeping with a certain person, but she's really sleeping with somebody else. And right. for the guy, you know, um, now of course this is fiction. They worked it out. Everything, um, you worked out. Oh, they had a happy future. They ended up together, but. Uh, if that guy leaped back and he goes, what? That was the worst decision of my life. I, I, I stopped seeing her for a reason. <laughs> yeah, know? that'd be a horrible thing. Exactly. And and I that's why we have, we have, I mean, that's why the ambiguity of that aspect is kind of frustrating with this type of episode, given what Sam has done. We don't know. So, but I mean, there's lots of, there's stuff that's being said uh, by other characters that supports that Sam, the body that Sam is in is actually more interested in Nicole than, anyone else because you have the hair and makeup uh, artist who basically says 
that guy has never really been with any woman in this stage. Like she keeps yeah. on go- coming after him and he keeps on pushing her away. So like, even the, the real guy, the real guy is a man of principle. Yes. Yeah. A bit more than a bit more than Sam in this in this case. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> or what would be more horrible is if you find out that the real guy is actually a, a closeted homosexual and what happened is is worse but that's a speculation we don't we don't know we but don't know giving the benefit of the doubt that these these two souls uh, it, or these two fa- bodies are, are in love and it's Sam's a fantasy soul. show and i forgive yeah. him <laughs> <clears throat> but i guess so uh, so ro you said what you thought about it script you said what you thought about it sean you said what you thought about it nick what did you think about this episode um i'd give it a solid b um it's it's not one of my favorite episodes. I w- I was never a theater kid, um, but uh, it's a fun episode in, in a lot of ways. <laughs> you know, as much as it, it seemed like I was picking it apart, like I I enjoyed the the episode and everything. It wasn't one that that like blew me away, but it's also not one that if I was doing a rewatch that I would skip over this. I I, I definitely enjoyed watching it. Um, so it's 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 kind of um you know not not in my top but i i enjoyed it a lot how dare you uh, i i i think it's good again uh it's a memorable one i wouldn't say it's my favorite but i do like the episode it's very memorable and i've always enjoyed it uh let's quickly just make sure that i set everybody you know some highs to people that were here that are often here tex rogers don ron donafaro uh we had uh I believe, let me see who else we got here. We got uh, Tripping Orc was here. Uh, We had Lisa Lisa Katrian. That's what I'm going with. We had uh, the Wolf from Heart 79. Um, Let me quickly see. Tornadoes. uh, uh, Mark's 47, yes. Tornadoes. there was like Kai, Kaiwan Calendar, I think was here. Ishmael. Uh, Matthew Marcello. Matthew Marcello, you're right. Ishmael. A lot of great people. Uh, Dred Roberts was here. Dred Roberts, my friend. Uh, we're going to be doing a, a unexpected uh, late night stream soon. Uh, we're going to be doing a night owl today. And. Uh, you say Ishmael? Ishmael, I said Ishmael. Marks for seven, I said. I think there wasn't Malachi D something. All these people are coming out towards the end here. Malachi yeah. D. William, Super Mario Brothers. You need to start three. later. <laughs> right, right. It's good that we started so late. I hope I, I managed to find everybody. If I miss somebody, I'm Matthew Marcillo. Uh, but yeah, it was a really nice turnout today. Uh, so great to see everybody here. Uh, Kaiwan Calendar here. I said it. And yeah, I see Dred Roberts here. He's going to be, I'm going to be doing the. The Night Owl with him. He's a has a great channel too. If you guys should check it out, and I guess uh, just one by one, Ro, anything you want to plug? No, like I said, uh, I drop new episodes every Thursday. I uh, teamed up with uh, one of my patrons, Comics and Cosmetics. Danny and I talked about the '90s comic book of Star Wars: Dark Empire. We did a uh, breakdown and discussion on uh, on that series. So if you guys remember. Dark Empire, go check it out. And um, the first time I mentioned it, uh, people were saying I wasn't even alive yet. So that was very uh, heart, <laughs> heart, heart, heart wrenching. I listened to that this morning, Ro. It was very good. Thank you, Nick. Um, script, anything you want to plug? Uh, yeah, I got two things. One, you can go check out my cool interview I had with Ethan Van Skyver from All Caps Comics. Uh, if you're a Patreon member, you got to see that uh, many weeks ago, but I just released it today on YouTube for everyone to else to enjoy. And then this Saturday, uh, Scripts on Saturday, where we'll be doing a, a fun little uh, review of a, a kind of like a dark, it's not a comedy, but it's a dark story called Two-Faced uh, about a high school senior that attempts to get her principal fired. It's got a little bit of election to it for the, from the uh, Matthew Broderick, Reese Weatherspoon type. So we'll be reading that this uh, Saturday for you guys to listen to. So check that out at 7 p.m. Eastern. Awesome. And I see Joshua Calkins here. And yes, uh, certainly check out uh, Scripps show. It's very unique, the Scripps on Saturdays, uh, something that really isn't done in a lot of other places. Uh, Sean, anything you want to plug? 
Uh, I should have a new drawing video done this weekend, so Monday, maybe Sunday. I are never you, know never know when to post them. Are you doing that uh, that young lady that you posted in the in Hollywood the chat? from Cool World? Because Cool World, the prequel cool. comics, for some reason, still gets views on my channel, even though it's like one of the earliest and worst comic reviews yeah. ever. Um, she was she was no piano teacher. <laughs> <laughs> she could tickle my eyebrows, as Al says. Uh, other than that, if uh, I might do a live stream with my dad this weekend, that should be interesting. That's Probably cool. talk about cool. motorcycles, muscle cars, Star cool. Trek, and Star Wars. We'll see. Uh, Very nice. And then if you want stickers, go to the Etsy shop, uh, realshankrimalart.etsy.com. Do it. Absolutely. Do it. Uh, finally, we have Nicholas, the Backyard Tardis. Nick, is there anything you want to plug? Uh, yeah, mostly my adventures in the locksmithing channel right now. I, I've got some stuff in mind for the other channel, but it's on hold at the moment. But uh, I've had a couple of them drop this week. I had uh, a story about having to rekey my neighbor's house, who ended up being a retired locksmith. Didn't even know that about him. But... Uh, uh, it was a pain in the butt because he, he did everything that you could do to make it difficult. <laughs> and uh, and then I have uh, tomorrow my Locksmith Reacts to Hollywood. I'm going to be doing the uh, Justice League Unlimited looking at uh, the question, uh, breaking into a secure facility and uh, how, how he accomplishes that. So um, that one's just kind of a short little fun one after I been doing some long ones but uh and the next week i'm gonna have uh i think the i have my 100th one which will be uh my most in interesting customer ever and this this is a guy who types a password into a computer every day so that the, the messages don't go out type type kind of guy um and then after that, I have an eviction that I had to heavily edit the footage because it would not have been safe for YouTube. So uh, fun ones coming up. Well, you don't want to get into any trouble. Uh, in any case, thank yeah. you, everybody. I have the, the Night Owl today. It's at 1145. You can see it on YouTube uh, and on Rumble. Uh, I highly, highly recommend it. And... Uh, I guess uh, without further ado, I should find I should thank you to the panel and thank you to, for all all of you guys in the chat for being here. I'm gonna find our uh, our outro and then just play it, which I'm gonna do right now. I'm such an awesome